when I met you, that was something strange because I said, do you have your coordinates and you, you showed me your hand? Yeah, yeah. How, how, how did that go? So, so you have like a chip inside your arm? Yeah, hand? I have a chip in, inside my hand. For this episode of Bold Books and Bones, I'm on my way to the airport to pick up a friend. His name is Tobias. So uh, he's landing in a couple of minutes uh, from Sweden. Finally, you got Hi. your back. Yeah. Welcome to Belgium, man. Thank you. <laughs> so happy you're here. <laughs> Some months ago, uh, we were both speaking at a conference. Yes, I remember I was the first speaker, you were the last speaker, and uh, you had a more uh, difficult job than me because he was uh, I was early afternoon speaking and he was like the last speaker after the dinner, so people are really tired and yeah. Um, they, they, I was wondering like what's going to happen, but he really woke up the whole audience and they were super energized and I was super impressed by what he had to tell. So I thought, why not inviting him to Bold Books and Bones to introduce him to all of you and so that you can learn to know him. And there are two reasons why I invited him. One is to really share his story, but secondly, he should really write a book and he's still not doing it. So hopefully um, we can figure out when he's going to start. Great. Good. <laughs> okay, let's shoot. So I prepared a few questions for you. So um, maybe to start off, can you explain to the people like what is it actually that you do? So my name is Tobias Dexel or Tobias as they say in, in English speaking countries. I don't actually care. It's the same name. Uh, I'm uh, the founder of a company called the Combiner uh, and that's a company I created uh, three years ago. And before that, I've been working in different uh, sectors and industries. I used to be the curator for the Nobel Prize Museum in Stockholm, for example. I've been working in education, I've been working with advertising, I've been working in so many different fields. Uh, and what I do today is I, I do four keynote presentations every month. I never do five, I never do three. I do four keynote presentations. It doesn't take me 40 hours, uh, it takes me a couple of hours, but not 40. So then I dig into different products, and from the beginning I wanted it to be four keynote presentations and four products. That's impossible for me. I can do four presentations and two products. Okay, so four and two. Yeah. So, and, and what are is it your keynote presentations about? I saw one of them that was amazing, but what, what would well, you explain it? Well, the keynote, I, I never do the same twice, but it goes back to the same thing. I, I, I want to speak about on how to bring ideas to reality. It's, it's so easy to talk about different things and it's so hard to, to, to go to the execu execution phase. So, so I try in my presentations to, to discuss on how to bring ideas to reality. And for me, it's about collaboration, but it's also about diversity and it goes back also to trust. Okay. But uh, you, you said uh, how, how to not only have a good idea, but also to put it into action. Yeah. But here's a little bit of an irony, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> after the presentation, I asked you, like, do you have a book? Yeah. And you said, everyone asks me that. Yeah. And you still don't have one. No. So... What is the secret here that you are always delaying that? But this is also quite funny because, as you said, I did, when we met, I did the presentation during like the dinner. Or, and I'm, I'm very competitive. I'm very picky. I want things to be really, really top of the line. Okay. So I love to do things when I know it's really complicated. So do a present, keynote presentation during dinner, that's complicated. <laughs> or like to, to start this conference early in the morning, that's complicated. I love those complicated things. Okay. Uh, when, when it comes to writing a book, since, since I took too many courses at university and I also, my minor was like literature, I'm very picky. So I realized that if I want to write a book, I don't want to write a bad book. Uh, I want to write a good book. And then that's complicated. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was how, why should I do it? Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, it was maybe I, I thought maybe I should do it for my ego. Okay. And then I realized I actually don't care. 
So for me, it's, I, I needed to figure out why shall I actually write this book? Right. And it was not enough for me to say, oh, you should write the book. And I, because I didn't get it why. Okay. Today, I actually think I, 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 I know why I need to do the book. So All right. I, I, I prepared myself and I, I w- will write uh, a book. Okay. Yeah. So if you have to, I, I brought a little bit, a few cards yeah. there. If you would write down... Like maybe three words that would describe or indicate what your book would be about. What would that be? Okay. All right. So, so these four words would describe your book. Yes. So let's start. So. Let's go with this one. Right. Words. Words has always been super important for me. I'm, 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 I'm a little bit nerdy. I, I, I tend to... I love data and I tend to get a little bit obsessed about stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were talking about passion in the beginning. I think passion is a, a, it's a too weak word. You have an obsession for yeah, things. Yeah, I, I think in order to be successful, somehow you need to embrace obsession. Okay, all right. Uh, and... I've always been obsessed by different things, but then I, I change my mind and then I get obsessed with something else. Okay. So when I was really young, I was obsessed by those like uh, electronic musical bands from Germany. And then I got bored and then I was obsessed by, by uh, names of plants in Swedish dialects. And I went to university and I thought I should do my PhD in that area. And I got a little bit bored. And then I started working for the Nobel <coughs> Prize Museum. And then I got obsessed by the Nobel laureates. Okay. <clears throat> and then I did that for a couple of years. And then I got bored. And today, it's about my, my obsession today is about bringing things to life. Bringing okay. thi- ideas to reality. Okay. And so going words. back to words, I yeah. think that... Words are so so important because we tend to speak a lot and we are using all those words, but we are not like defining what we actually mean. Mm-hmm. And by not defining what we actually mean with the, the words that we are using, we are not uh, successful when it comes to executing stuff. Okay, so the first topic, so there will be a chapter on words or, or, or how to see that? I, I, what, what I want to do, I think, I, I would... I, my idea for the book is to 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 uh, maybe have twelve chapters. Okay. And every chapter is a different word. Okay. So it's actually a word book. Okay. And so if you if you go and buy a dictionary, then you you find the word word. But I want to explain how I view the word the word word. Or I want to explain. The other words, and Perfect. I want it to be combined. Okay, cool. That yeah. sounds very interesting. That I really love that. Okay, second word. Second word is uh, this one: disrespect. Disrespect. What? Are, why you choose that one? So when I was the, working as a curator at the Nobel Prize Museum, uh, we painted the words on the museum floor. Uh-huh. And those words, uh, we didn't paint by chance. We, we painted words that Nobel Prize laureates told us these are super important for the creative process. Okay. And of course, they, they, we, we printed words like vision and uh, um, we also printed words like um, persistence persistency etc but uh, one of the words that is painted is disrespect and I've been thinking about this a lot because I think this is a very important word it's not about being disrespectful to other people but I think that we need to be disrespectful to other people's ideas and we should always challenge them Okay. And, and especially when you hear a word like disrespect often people react no you shouldn't be disrespectful mm-hmm. but I actually think we should okay. I think that by being a little bit more disrespectful to each other's ideas we move progress further okay. very nice okay. and it's also like if people hear this word they think this, this is a very negative word yeah. and for me it's not I think every ability or every skill can be used in a creative way yeah so even words like disrespect which most people doesn't like could be very useful 
All right. Very nice. So disrespectful to other people's ideas, but then with the purpose of helping them to, to move on, actually. Yeah. Okay, cool. Very nice. Yeah. Next word, collaboration. Collaboration, yeah. I think this one is the key. This okay, is, this is also the key, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone is talking about collaboration, yeah. but people, they, they, they don't define what it actually is. Yeah. And most things that is called collaboration is not collaboration. Okay. And most How would you define it? In order to make collaboration work, you need to, to, to uh, understand that if, you, if people like their own ideas and people are drawn to similar people, if you love to communicate, you are drawn to other people who love to communicate. If right. you are people who love to, to network, you hang around with people who love to network. Disrespectful people, they hang around with disrespectful people. <laughs> okay. uh, the problem is that, and th that's normal, but if we only hang around with similar people all the time, we don't... We don't uh, evolve. Okay. Super. So, so the, the key to, to collaboration is to work, start working with people that are different from yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's actually super complicated because people fail working together with people who are similar to themselves. Right. And how are they going to manage to work with people who are different from themselves? Right. I think it's the, the same thing. The same key why they are failing is trust. Okay. You remember when you went to like high school and, and the teacher put you like, and you should, should work in, in smaller groups and then you ended up with someone you didn't like and you didn't trust that one person and you thought, if I, if I end up with this person, my grades are like in, in, it's going, in, in, going, in down. going down, I will do that person's work and we will not tell the teacher. That was not collaboration, that right. was something else. Okay. I think true collaboration is bouncing ideas together with people uh, that are different from yourself and also have this idea about it's not about just talking about ideas it's about bringing those ideas to life all right very very nice very intriguing and you have a last word yeah the last one combine. is combine and that's this was uh, the name of your website eh? yeah so 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 my company is combiner I, I played with the words because i wanted to have an international name of my, my company and i was always making jokes about bad company names <laughs> Until I realized that everyone is wants to like, like an English name of their company, and, and I couldn't register Combine because someone else already took it. Already. Took it yeah. yeah, and then I started playing with the words, so I, I, I added the, the letter R, so you get Combiner, uh, and then I realized, oh, this, this I, 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 I could take this one, uh, but the problem is. I don't have like English as my mother tongue, and my, my mother tongue is Swedish, so I, I realized after a while, after registering the company, maybe this means something that I don't know about. <laughs> so, so I needed to Google it, and then I ended up at like some tech gadgets and also with the, on the Transformer website because there are some Transformer called combiners, and those oh, okay. robots are super interesting because they they form huge robots. Someone is the leg and someone is the torso and someone is the head. Okay. Uh, and, uh, that's, that's exactly what, the, that's what, I, yeah. what I actually do. I, I, I put things together. Perfect. Helping people, facilitating and making things happen. So this is perfect. Wonderful. Love the name. And this is also something I want to do in my book. Because if you have like different chapters with different words. Like a chapter about disrespect. A chapter about collaboration. A chapter about... Uh, um, maybe playfulness, okay. maybe a chapter about curiosity. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's a, it's not about reading the book from like page one and to two. page uh, and two hundred. Mm -hmm. It's about you can combine the book in any way you want to. So the the, the word combiner and the concept of combiner has many perspectives on it. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be a book about collaboration, about the importance of words about disrespect, about yeah. combiners, about playfulness, and you can read it like in any order that you really want. Yeah. And, and then, uh, speaking, going back to the words, this is something that makes me really annoyed because we are using words that are super complicated. Mm -hmm. And then people, they don't want to feel stupid, so they don't admit, admit that they don't, they don't get understand. it. No. Yeah. And then we think that we agree on something. But we don't. So for me, it's about breaking down the words in a very simple way, so everyone can can understand. Get it. Yeah, because that's a, a huge problem in society today. That a lot of people they don't understand, 
and if we don't understand and can't speak to each other, mm. then we are doomed. Yeah, we cannot yeah. create anything. No. And uh, I think that recently also uh, what we see in politics that people don't even agree anymore on facts. No, right? yeah. And it's a very strange evolu- evolution. Now, you have your words, you have your intention to write a book. Yeah. Um, when can we expect your book to be ready? So I actually uh, decided to 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 to, to sh- accept this challenge and um, I will write it down now. Yeah, yeah. 15 or 16. And I think this is good because I I, I need the pressure. <laughs> okay. So ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna invite him back again somewhere at that yeah. period to see where he is on the first chapter. Yeah. And what will your first chapter be about? The first chapter would be on the collaboration. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Right, I'm can't wait to see it. I'm really excited about it. I, I also saw that um, you 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 you've, you really you travel all over the world. We yeah. were, we both do. Uh, it was not so easy to find a moment uh, to to meet each other. Uh, but I, I remember that you you have something with a little ducklet. Yeah. Uh, that you do everywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah, I do. Can you tell a bit more about it? It's going back to the. I was carrying this this piece of like Legos, because um, when. I'm a big fan of combining stuff, mm-hmm. and when I stumbled upon this this these kind of Lego pieces a couple of years ago, yeah. I, I I I thought it was great because I remember when I was a young kid playing with Lego, and then this is a creative exercise that I I always tries to squeeze in if it's possible, because after speaking about things that people think is complicated like how do we how do we become more efficient how do we embrace this respect within our companies etc uh, then i say okay now it's time for us not just to talk it's time to us to just do a real practical exercise right and then people they think they, they are a little bit scared because they are going yeah, to yeah I remember yeah, I was in the yeah, audience <laughs> yeah and I said can I, I want like uh, a couple of people and you need to go up, go up on, to me and we will do this test and say mm. I'm going to measure who is smart and who is not very smart and people get really scared <laughs> and then I say no this is not about collaboration this is about like competition all right and some of you will like solve this. Uh, exercise within like 30 seconds and that's great and some of you are really slow you do it in two minutes but no one gets more than two minutes Mm -hmm. and then they stand there and they think oh no I'm going to fail and then they ask them please create a duck and they say what did you say a duck and the time has already started it's five seconds it's Mm -hmm. 155 to go Mm -hmm. and the funny part is it doesn't matter how you do it you always end up this is this is a duck, not a very nice one, but this is a duck, and I would argue that yes, this is also a duck. Yeah, I know you have like thousands of them. Yeah, uh, I saw that you were in China and that you asked all yeah. the audience to make one, and they were all almost. Different, and this is eh? very funny because I didn't know how many combinations there were from the beginning. So I thought this was fun. There are plenty of combinations, but yeah. not too many. Yeah. So, so so I started playing around with this exercise, and then then I was told that those six pieces can generate half a million different solutions. <laughs> and today when I, I do huge presentations, I could have love 2,000 people in the audience and we do this exercise, I know from the beginning that it's very, very rare that people do an identical solution. Yeah. And people often make a solution and they will look upon it and say, this is really ugly. Yeah. <laughs> and then they look upon someone else's solution as, and they have like a more traditional one, maybe like... Yeah. Maybe... Let's create a nice looking one. This is a more standard one. This is a very easy to recognize yeah, yeah. ducklet, yes. And then people say, oh, this is beautiful and mine is so ugly. And I say, I didn't ask you to create nice looking ducks. I asked you to create ducks and you all did unique solutions. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, are not, we are not targeting only the nice looking ones. Mm. We are targeting different solutions. Mm. And sometimes I didn't do that when we met, but then sometimes I'm really mean. I form teams of people. <laughs> so I bring like 10 people together and, and, they, and they, you have to use all their pieces. Okay. And I said, you have three minutes, let's create a huge duck. Okay. And just imagine what do you think happens if you bring, for example, 
10 people that loves to hang around to communicate, mm-hmm. they will not finish in time. Okay. And people are very persistent. Yeah. They don't finish in time. They, 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 and people are disrespectful or very competitive. They start fighting. And this is a huge problem. When we are allowed to choose ourselves, we hang around with similar people all the right. time. Okay. And it's not very efficient. Mm-hmm. So, so often we already we have all those different humans around ourselves, and it's about starting working with people that think in a different way than yourself. Okay. Exploring. Great. But you, uh, can, we can follow you on Twitter also. Yeah, yeah. You make and it's ducks each time you're in another airport. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I started this this crazy thing a couple of years ago because I didn't know there were so many solutions so I thought since I travel a lot and you know airports are so boring I thought why should I sit you sit there and wait and said let's create a new solution and my, my, my goal from the beginning was to create a new solution on each and every airport I, I went to and then I met people from Lego telling me there are half million solutions there are not so many airports <laughs> uh, and uh, since, since I loved to, to, to be challenged uh, I decided, okay, but I will do it anyway. So every travel I go, I make a new solutions and I post it on social media. And then I need to keep track of the different solutions yes, because I, I didn't think, think people would care. Yeah. But today, people could sometimes people mail me and they tell me, didn't you make a similar solution like two years ago when you were in Lisbon? Uh, and then... I, I, I don't do the same twice. <laughs> okay, perfect. I have all of them in my head. <laughs> you can remember them? Yeah, yeah, oh, I do. Wow. All right. Now, um, I also asked you to, to, to bring a book. Since yeah. Bold Books and Bones is all about books. Yeah. Um, uh, it's about two books. One, the one you're going to write. Yeah. And I'm going to invite you back. But then you also brought one that is close to your heart or that you find important. Yeah. Which one is it? Uh, it's this one. Let's see if you can see it. Okay, it's and, and what, what is it about? This is super interesting. As, as, as I've been saying a couple of times, I, I, you, I, as, yeah, I, I worked for many years at the Nobel Prize Museum. Mm-hmm. I don't just have like different combinations of like ducks in my head. I have all the Nobel Prize laureates in my head. It's 935. Okay. And I, and I play with, with data. And Harry Martinson received the Nobel Prize in literature in... Uh, 1974, I think, together with another writer uh, called Avin Jonsson. Okay. And, and what I like with this book is that this is a, like a, it's a science fiction poem. Oh. And people often think, okay, the Nobel Prize in literature, it must be super complicated and super yeah. boring to, to, to read. This is super interesting. It's not very complicated. Mm-hmm. It's about human Human species has destroyed the earth and we need to move away. Okay. So Anyara, which is the name of the book, is the spaceship that okay. people are using to leave earth. Okay. And, 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 and um, as I said, he received the prize in 1974, many, many years ago. This is very, very relevant today. Uh, and I think that by, by, by reading literature, and especially science fiction literature, uh, we can we can uh, learn more about our societies and also those challenges that we we need to to to, to accept. Okay, so a poem, science fiction poem about humans who have uh, destroyed the world. Yeah. So maybe that's so not science fiction anymore then. No, we we don't know. You you know that's I heard that's one of the reasons Elon Musk wants to go to Mars because he wants to like a plan B. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happens if we destroy the Earth? And, mm-hmm. and I, I, I hope that we are not going to do that. Mm-hmm. But I think that once again by reading literature and uh, getting new perspectives, I think some of the, the solutions will be found in literature. Wow. Very nice, very nice. Thank you very much. I assume it's translated in many languages. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. So Since it's a, and this is also one of the reasons I brought it because it's a Nobel laureate in literature. So then you probably have it in, in, in most uh, other languages. La- yeah. Languages. Perfect. Yeah. When I met you, there was something strange because I said, "Do you have your coordinates?" And you, you showed me your hand. Yeah, yeah. How 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 did that go? So, so you have like a chip inside your arm. Yeah, hand? I have chip in, inside my hand. So this is why on earth does people do that one? One of the reasons I did it is because I believe in improvement, and I think that, uh, for example, keys, 
has been around for a very long time and they yeah. always destroy pockets etc yeah and uh, i thought and, uh, can, I, can i feel that yeah you can feel it it's like here oh yeah i feel it's a hard piece yeah it's the size of a rice grain okay so what what, what does it do so i have uh, my contact info and like you see here oh my god to be so a that... cybernetically enhanced human, date of upgrade. Okay, and so now you're calling yourself? Yes, <laughs> you don't do okay. that. And then, and the then date if of I want to send, instead of having a business card, I can send people my contact info. Oh, wow. And this is a way to be more sustainable. We don't need to print so much stuff if we don't... So, so uh, who, who did that build that chip? Inside your uh, your hand. So the office space where I'm actually sitting when yeah. I'm in Stockholm, it's yeah. called Epicenter, and they they, um, they they asked people sitting there, do you want keys or do you want to have a chip implant? <laughs> and they organized something called chip and beer implant parties, uh, and then I think it's maybe like eight thousand people so far in Sweden who has interested. Who has a chip? Yeah. Tobias, thank you so, so much. That was really nice talking to you. It was uh, great. Uh, uh, and I, I love that you put pressure to me, so I need actually to... to, to <laughs> yeah, so he, he made a commitment here in front of a camera. Um, I'm going to invite him back. If you are more interested in what Tobias does, I will uh, leave the links in the notes to his website. And uh, you can follow him on Twitter, where you can find all his variations of his yeah. little ducks. Uh, and uh, please challenge him as much as you can. Be as disrespectful to his ideas as you can, because it's exactly what he what he needs. So, uh, stay tuned to the next episode of Bold Books and Bones. Bye. Bye. Bye.